everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Onigiri and Co podcast. Today, I'm on my own. Hello. <laughs> hello me. Hello you. <laughs> um, I'm really glad to record this episode on my own. It's the first one on this channel. It might be uh, slightly shorter than uh, the one I usually do with guests because I don't have the, I don't think I have uh, the, the, the skill to do a whole hour episode on my own. And also I just thought it, uh, it was going to be an episode that is quickly, briefly about a topic I wanted to talk about for a little while. Um, in the past, it would probably have been a YouTube video, you know, when I, when I used to do YouTube videos and now my thing is podcast. So this has become a podcast episode and I hope you're going to enjoy it. First of all, I just wanted to catch up a little bit with you, tell you what I'm, what I've been doing recently. Don't worry. It's not too long. <laughs> it's just a little catch up to explain what has been happening. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's, let's just get straight into it. So, um, if you follow the podcast, you might have noticed that the whole month of October was uh, a big break. It was for the best. It was a break um, to just reassess a little bit my relationship with internet. It was almost a forced break. Uh, I just went on holiday in France and my initial plan was to keep recording podcast episodes there. I even recorded one with Blackbird. So the last episode that was published on this podcast um, is recorded in France. Um, and what actually happened is that I had some technical issues there. I had tested my setup before going to France, my podcast setup, I mean, I mean, my traveling one. And I thought it was going to do the job, it didn't really do the job exactly like I wanted. And then you know how it is, you're on holiday, you're catching up with people that you haven't seen for a while. You know, catching up with your parents, catching up with friends, and my equipment was not the best. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to put this aside for a month. People are not going to go anywhere because podcast is not like YouTube or Instagram. There's no algorithm. People who want to, people who want to listen um, are there. They have my podcast in their app and yeah, they're not going anywhere. So I thought may as well just do what I like and then do what I like the podcast as well when I come back home with the right equipment. So in the way that I actually want to do it. So that's explained a little bit my break. Um, the good thing about the break is that it also gave me a more ideas about what to do with the podcast. And this is why I have created a channel on Instagram, which is called Onigiri and Co. You can always join. I'm trying to interact, not every day, because I don't want to overwhelm people with things, you know, interactions online are not supposed to be overwhelming and take more time than what you actually want to do in real life but I'm trying to interact a bit more uh, with the community to know what you would be interested in I had great suggestions for episodes ideas um, things that I wanted to do more anyway I wanted to do more episodes with uh, racing pilots which was suggested in the chat I wanted to do an episode for a long time with Zoe FPV it has been suggested in the chat as well and we're on we're actually planning to record soon so we're just trying to figure out a time that works because she lives in california i'm in australia so we're on to that and i am planning to do a, an episode again with lexi with mayan high it's been months and at the moment she's in australia we're going to catch up in real life very soon uh, probably going to spend christmas together um maybe new year uh, she might be in sydney for new year but yeah we have some plans and inside those plans we want to fit uh, one or several episode recording together. So that's going to be exciting as well, especially for you who uh, also like Lexi, you know, because I know you're there. <laughs> you're, um, you, you're inside the audience and she's going to be back soon. And I'm really happy for this episode. So what is this episode about? The concept is three videos that I think everybody in the community should watch once. Not because it's crazy flying, crazy skills. Um, it's more about the spirit behind it and these three videos i have rewatched many times since since i discovered them and why i'm not too sure why but they, they are definitely speaking to me and because they speak to me and i really enjoy you know our community the fpv community not just the flying i really like interacting with people from our community in real life online etc and every time I watch these videos, it reminds me of something that I felt that I still feel. Um, one of them makes me laugh every time. Uh, another, another one makes me laugh as well and gives me like motivation. And the third one for me is textbook of a very nice FPV reel, 
when you want to not just fly, but also show the capabilities of a drone uh, as a camera. So <laughs> without being, uh, without staying too vague, we're going to go straight into the topic. And like I said, this episode might be a little bit shorter than usual, but that's fine. I'm just by myself. We're just chatting. Um, and the goal is just to recommend you three videos that I hope that if you haven't seen them yet, you're going to go and watch them after. I don't want to spoil everything. We're going to play a little bit uh, of the audio, obviously, on this episode. For those who are watching the video, well, first off, you can see my super cool pajamas. <laughs> you can see my background and rubbish outside my house. But you're going to be able to see, hopefully, the image as well. Um, and without any further ado, let's get into that topic. I'm not showing you these videos. Like, my favorite one is the last one or something like that. I just thought it was suitable to show you um, and make you listen to them in, in a certain order. We're going to start with a short one with snippets of the longer one, and then we'll finish with the one that is only something you can watch. So on the audio version of this episode, it's not going to be really useful. And I recommend you to just jump on YouTube later and have a look at um, at the, the third one or just, you know, YouTube it, <laughs> search it on YouTube. Um, so the first one is called Remove Your Props. And let me quickly check. It was published in, oh my God, seven years ago on the old school, with the old school Roto Riot crew. And the main guest is uh, Sharpu. The title, yeah, is Remove Your Props. Uh, I'm almost sure that a lot of people have watched it. Maybe all of you in the audience have watched it. I haven't rewatched this one for probably... I would say we're, what, we're 2023 now, so maybe four years, but before that I had rewatched it a lot. And four years ago, I'm saying that it's because I probably showed it to, friend, to friends that I was living with uh, that were starting the hobby and, um, and they needed some advice. And I said, you have to watch this video because it's, it's brilliant the way it is talked about and, and the reason why you need to remove your props when you're doing anything on your drone, when it's tuning, as soon as you plug it to your computer um, to make some tuning or some modification to change settings, you have to remove your props. And, and this video is brilliant. So I'm going to rewatch it now. I'm going to start sharing my screen um, and it's going to be recorded as well. And so if you don't know, before I start playing it, um, Sharpu was one of the original pilots from Roto Riot. I think he was the first one to leave the crew because he had other um, he had other plans for his career. He's been into animation for a long time now. I don't want to say too much about it because I'm not too sure what his role is. I think he's been involved with companies like Pixar. Um, so he has moved on from being on YouTube and as a FPV pilot to doing other things. I don't know if he still flies. One of my goals would be to have him on the podcast, but I don't know. I always feel weird asking people who have moved on from FPV community because I don't know, one, if they still want to be heard from the community. And two, uh, I don't know if uh, they just want the, that it, it's in their past, you know, so. But I'm sure I could ask. So we'll see. Maybe one day. When, when one, day one day we'll have Sharpu on this uh, podcast. That would be really, really good. If you don't know him, I would recommend to just go find him on old Roto Riot episodes and also um, his own YouTube channel. Um, I think it's it's great if you're new in the hobby to, to know what happened before before you. Even I don't know everything that happened uh, you know, before me because there were different waves into the FPV progression on the internet. Um, and I'm not part of the initial wave, so there might have been things that, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I've never watched and I'm missing on. So, yes, I'm going to try to share my screen, windows, share, remove your props. And I believe the sound is going to be recorded. I'm going to play this video um, the whole lot because I just want to rewatch it. And I hope it's good advice for you. This is what happened. Calibrating the issues, every time I do it, I remove the props. But there's that day that you go like, nah, I know what I'm doing. I'm sharper. <laughs> <laughs> so then, so then uh, we plug it into the computer, 2000 to set it to calibration mode. It goes off the ground. And I just remember going like, like this. And the thing is coming towards me and I keep hitting it. I was with two friends. 
they're looking at me going like this, and I'm going like this with the quad. <laughs> Then they come in, then we start kicking it. I managed to push it this way. And then Sergio was wearing, yeah, when your toes are out. Flip flops. Flip flops. Oh. So he's going like this. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he wants to step on it. He doesn't want to lose his toes. So then I, so then I managed to like, literally, it's not stopping moving because I'm using the dal props V2, so they're not breaking. <laughs> Seriously, the props are not breaking. And it didn't cut. My finger and my leg, and, and it didn't broke. They kept spinning, so we started kicking it. <laughs> Literally kicking it. We were killing an animal at that point. <laughs> so we go, pop, pop, pop. The smoke starts coming out, oh, no. and, I, and I put my hand there, and I pull the battery. I didn't even pull the battery. I pulled the cable, the whole cable. So the battery stayed. I pulled the cables. And then we kind of all look at each other and we were like, what the hell just happened? Yeah, and we all start looking and I'm like, I, know, I knew I cut my thumb because I can feel it. I feel my leg is hurting and I have a cut on my leg. It wasn't that bad. But we were like, wow, dude, that was the longest fight with the drone. Never again, Never dude. Never again, props plugged in with the computer. Yeah. That's how I am. But right now, every time I plug my quad, I get this oh. like shivering. That's like, exactly ooh. How I am. You're, like, you're like, let's. how do you plug it in without touching props? Yeah. Like, hands, you seriously. The, you can put it, your elbow there. It happened yeah. right before the... When I plug it in and I drive, I was putting my whole weight. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> yeah. So I learned my lesson. I will remove the props next time. Be safe. So um, I hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> I had not watched this um, this video for a very long time, and it's it's. I think the reason why it's funny, why it's funny to me, is that we all have been in this situation where sometimes the drones have done something weird. And for me, it happened with turtle mode. Like um, turtle mode at the time on better flight could be a little bit unpredictable uh we all had like mo drones moving by by themselves and and the scare of just grabbing it and and, and it's starting I've, I've seen it start i've seen people plug in and the drone starts and you don't always know why you think you had your safety switch so it's more like a a, a laughing uh, um how do you say coping mechanism when you watch this video because if you have ever seen a drone going rogue like an fpv drone going rogue you know you know what it feels like and i feel like shampoo just conveys it um amazingly and even though it's seven years old it is still relevant to that day so that's why i wanted to show you this video in case you had never seen it the second video um is uh by a pilot who is also out of the community i mean He's still flying because on his Instagram, sometimes you can see that he's active. Um, but yes, uh, he hasn't posted on YouTube for a long time. And, you know, that's understandable. It's lots of work. Um, but what we're going to watch is one of uh, his YouTube videos. Uh, it's probably just some snippet of it. So um, Tom Smith, FPV, is from the UK. Um, he's been a, an inspiration uh, for lots of pilots uh, back in... 2016, I would say 2016, 2017, um, was doing quite a bit of vlogs, was doing exceptional freestyle flying, um, and was just entertaining to watch. And I discovered him through Mr. Steel. Uh, Mr. Steel one day was doing a live Q&A, I think on YouTube or Instagram, and people were asking him, do you, do you watch other people, people's content? I don't remember who else he mentioned, but he said uh, that he was watching Tom Smith and that he loved for once his accent from the UK and also that he just thought his flying was incredible um, and that he was just entertaining, very natural person on vlogs and very reliable too. Um, so I ended up after that Q&A video live, I ended up, you know, Googling it, uh, looking, looking it up and turns out I can relate to that person as well. Like even the style, the music uh, that he uses in the vlog. Um, just the personality is very friendly. You feel like you're watching a friend. So this video though, um, I didn't, I don't think I saw it when it came out. It's a, it's a, it's a good question. Uh, let me quickly check what time it, um, came out. Oh, four years ago. No. So I probably saw it almost when it got published or maybe six months too late. And, uh, uh, at the time, without going into much details, I was just not doing great in my life. Not even FPV-wise. Uh, I had already slowed down a lot of um, flying in YouTube. 
uh, for a per personal reason. But yeah, I just wasn't um, the best in in uh, in my life in terms of mental health. Speaking of mental health, sorry, ADHD, I just remembered that uh, I'm also planning an episode about men's mental health uh, for this podcast, because, you know, let's be honest, the community and the audience of this podcast is mainly uh, male and we're in November. Uh, so I was thinking we could do a little bit of a, a discussion about men's mental health. Uh, maybe it will not it will, it will probably not be published in November because, uh, like I said, people were not available and then I wasn't available. So it might end up uh, being published either December or for the new year. But uh, yes, this is also coming. Anyway, uh, when I saw that video, I was not doing really well. Um, and um, something about that video, uh, well, the title is Luck of an FPV Pilot. And in a nutshell, without spoiling too much, I, I talked about that video in the past in another episode, I think, or several. It's uh, it's just a vlog of where Tom is trying to fly, uh, to just get spots, find spots to fly. And every time something happens, gets in the way of uh, him being able to just fly. And, and it's quite interesting because if you've been in a hobby for not even a long time, surely it has happened to you. You have a plan, whether you're building something and it keeps going wrong or you want to go fly and you know things keep not happening like you know your your, your partner calls you and you're like actually uh, can you can you do that like uh, i need you to, to do that so you have to cancel your flying session or or um you, even technically technically speaking you go on the field and the drone doesn't turn on or just the smoke or you just uh, you forgot your goggles at home i recently saw that on a facebook group that i'm part of someone said how good is it to to drive x kilometers i don't remember or x miles uh, just to find out that you left your goggles at home you know so you must know what i'm talking about <laughs> and if you don't know yet be ready it's gonna happen to you so i'm not gonna show you the whole video i recommend watching the whole video i'm just gonna show you a quick snippet of it and the reason why as well i find it interesting it's because without knowing it maybe i don't know if he knows it i don't know if tom knows uh, that but the conclusion of this video to me is very uh, meaningful because like i said when i watched it i was in my living room i was not doing well i think it was on a weekend and i was on my own and um and the conclusion just spoke to me outside of fpv it uh, it it was sort of a general thing um, about not quitting and, you know, always being persistent in life. And obviously this is, uh, related to, um, to the hobby. And when everything works against you, you want to quit or you're just like, ah, oh, I'm tired of this. Uh, I need something to do something else, you know? Um, but I think that the conclusion uh, of this episode spoke to me even more in terms of, you know, without getting too dark, like, but just, you know, trusting in life, trusting in the process and not giving up on it. Um, so here you go. We have a little bit of November, November talk, me mental health talk. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to play a little bit snippet of it and then I'm going to show you the end and hopefully you can, you can watch the whole video, um, in your own time. And here we go. They could be mythical creatures. You know, what's absolutely brilliant when you come flying, You've not got an SD card in your goggles, and then you go for tech off, and you realise doors open, and you've not got a memory card in there either, pal. So you're not going to be able to record any footage of the flight, are we, pal? Pack the gear back up, go back to the car. Ah, oh, the joys. The sun is out. I instantly feel better. Go we'll check it out. Found a few bits and bobs. An SD card for goggles. New SD card for GoPro. Big sausage roll. So after forgetting the memory card, going in the memory card, coming back, now I'm just getting a red screen in my goggles. Like, I don't even know if this is going to focus, but what is going on? Like, look, it's just a red screen. Plug back in. It makes a beep noise. The receiver modules come on. I do not believe it. You know what though, I've actually got a spare set of goggles in the car, but I really don't want to walk back to the car to get another set of goggles, come back out. You just want a quick blip, and it's just not a quick blip. Oh, they've come on. They've actually come on. 
Wait, what was that all about? Take antennas off. And it's come on. <laughs> Try and explain that one. All right, I'm going to pause it for a second. And um, I'm going to uh, go back on my screen. Here we are. So I don't know if you guys have experienced that before, but uh, that definitely happened to me going somewhere, uh, relying on my goggles SD card and then nothing happens. So that's one of the little things that, that happened to him uh, that day. I don't know if I should show another one because I don't want to spoil the whole video. It's pretty good video when you don't know what's going to happen because more happens later. So I would really recommend you to um, to watch <laughs> more. But since we talked a bit about uh, mental health and I just said what I said about the conclusion of um, of this, uh, this episode, I'm going to try to find a moment where um, he finishes the video and, and tries to, to give a... He, he tries to find a conclusion that I find uh, quite in, in inspirational. So I'm going to share this again. Here we go. I'm a GoPro battery now. It's flashing low. I think we're going to have to call it quits. But yeah. Even though you think it can't get better, even though you think life can't be any better, because you can only see the darkness and you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Just understand things can get better. You just got to be persistent and never, ever, ever give up. Here you go. I think it's just really nice sometimes to hear someone else, you know, saying this kind of things, um, saying an advice, especially when you when you look up to people for other reasons, like you you look up for pilot, you look up to pilots for their flying skills, and and then it's the little things that sometimes people you look up to say that can help you. I hope you enjoyed these little snippets. I really recommend to watch the whole video. Like I said earlier, it's very entertaining. And also there's some killer flights in them. So if you like, you know, FPV freestyle, I would definitely recommend um, to watch this video. Speaking of brilliant flying, uh, and since it's already 30, six minutes of me blabbing around on my own oh my god thanks guy for listening to this episode um we're gonna go to the third video which uh, you might all have seen it already it's a video um, by the renowned journey fpv and i think that video is also four years old uh something like this i'm currently scrolling through to try to find it but uh yeah it's not a new one and if you watch it now you probably you, you probably will think, oh, well, I've seen lots of FPV reels in my life. Why is she recommending this video? And that's true. Why am I recommending this video? Because since then, I've seen a lot of FPV reels from a lot of talented pilots. Um, but I think that what makes this video special is that you have to understand that it's uh, indeed um, four years old. And that four years ago, so that was the start of 2019, I think when it came out, FPV was finally reaching the, how can I say, the, the front of the stage. We, we, we were starting to see it in Formula Drift. So Journey FPV was chasing people in Formula Drift. So in sports, motorsports, uh, people in France or in Europe, I say France because I know people from France who were starting to do it. We're following, um, you know, ski athletes, uh, snowboard um, wing, kite, wing, wing surf. Like, was it? What is it called? Like the the people who jump from like plane and just and just fly. Like they're literally like flying squirrels with their uh, suit. Um, they were just starting to chase this kind of people, um, and it was the start of expanding our hobby to more than maybe not the start, but it was finally when we were when more people outside of the hobby were seeing our hobby as not just flip flops on a car park or racing through. Uh, gates but more like oh this is a camera and this is what we can do with it and it opens a lot of possibilities to the video world to movies you know to to uh, sport events to concerts to festivals to everything that we see now that seems normal um because when when and again like i said i'm not from the first generation of pilots in in the fpv community but I don't know where people thought where it was going to go when it all started. Because if you go back, for example, I went back on Mr. Steel channels because I needed to have a good chronological order of what happened, the, the shifts that happened in our hobby. Um, 
and I wasn't too sure when things happened. So I had I thought if I have a look at his channel, I will have good time frames and, and good markers of when some things happened. So you can see if you go back on his channel, you scroll all the way down and you can see when FPV was just, uh, this is what I'm doing. I'm flying. Uh, I'm flying, but now I'm vlogging. <laughs> you know, so you had flights in the first place and then you had vlogs and vlogs went on for a really long time. Um, Roto Riot really helped with with doing vlogs and, and showing the FPV community just like it had happened with flight test. Um, and then there were more elaborated videos, more like uh, scripted videos, but, but vlogs went on for a really long time. And in fact, they still go on in the community. It has never stopped. And then it all happened quite quickly. Uh, famous pilots thought, I believe, allegedly, um, YouTube is great but we can do more than just, you know, videos on YouTube. So they ended up working in the field. And that's also when Reels appeared. And I would say for sure four years ago, I can't tell if it was more than four years ago. I'm talking January 2019. I feel like the shift already had happened in 2018. Some people were making fun of Reels and cinematic FPV. At the time, we were calling this cinematic FPV because we didn't know what to call that because we always had freestyle. We always had racing and suddenly these people were not flying as a drone but they were flying for the image they were flying to capture something they were not flying um uh with the sole purpose of making the drone do things so racing or tricks you know like in freestyle and some people who had been in the community for a while didn't know how to receive this and as everything new that happens it got criticized people were making fun of people uh, adding sounds, ambient sounds, you know, to, to their videos. So if they were flying in mountain uh, with a bit of wind, people would add wind, which is really common now in videos. But when it first happened, people were like, oh, what is this? <laughs> and, and some people were making fun of it. They were, not ha they were not ready to receive this new thing in the hobby, which makes me wonder now, what, what is currently new in the hobby? I'm not too sure. Um, it would be nice to see what, what, what's... Uh, What's the next shift in our hobby? But this was definitely a big shift. And so to come back to that video, even if it was not the first reel to happen in the community, when I saw it, I just thought, wow, this is a textbook, um, a textbook video reel for anyone who would like to, to showcase their work. So the music is very good, even if you don't like this type of music. I usually don't listen to this type of music. I'm more like of a, you know, if, if you know me and you follow me on Instagram, I listen to everything, but in general, it's more metal and rock. And, um, but the music is engaging. The shots are amazing. Um, and the, the flying is very well executed. And knowing the pilot, you know that it's not only um, the flying, the flying itself is well done. It's not just um, editing magic that is applied later. It's, it's really magic in, in the fingers and, you know, on the sticks. So I wanted to show this. And unfortunately, it's not really going to relate at all for an audio version of this episode. So for the audio version, I think we're going to end the podcast here. I'm just going to tell you the title of the video that we're talking about. And it's called The Sky is Not the Limit. It's by Johnny FPV. It has 2.3 millions of views. <laughs> um, if that has any worth uh, or value to you, to me, it sort of means that, you know, more people than FPV pilots have watched it. And it probably helped. Um, it probably helped our hobby to gain popularity um, in, in the world, in a general worldview. Um, because let's be honest, when we do flip flops in car parks or if we race through gates, it doesn't have the appeal that the work that, for example, Journey FPV can can have on the general audience. And um, it's my opinion, but I think we should be grateful for people like Journey FPV and other pilots, you know, like him. But he's always been, um, uh, I'm not sure I have the word in English for this, but like uh, the first one to always bring the hobby in, in a certain direction. You know, he brought it to motorsport um, alongside other people. I don't want to say that he was the only one, but uh, he, he, he had he had the thing to, to make it, um, to, to give it exposure. He gave really great exposure to our hobby, which is not easy because we have to remember that we talk about drones and a lot of time the media 
loves to share the shocking stories about drones, anything negative about drones, you know. It has happened even to our hobby in the past. Um, I think it was Roto Riot um, that got into heaps of trouble in the past after doing some things that went on the news, you know, and, and drone pilot in general, not talking about FPV, but, you know, Mavic people, etc. There's always one person who's going to do something weird, and then that's what goes into the newspaper. So for people like, you know, I want to say for, for, for people like Journey FPV who, who always bring the best out of our hobby, um, I, I think it's admirable and I admire him for this. So besides the inspiration I can get from his edits and from his flying, I'm also very inspired by the person and, and how he shows the, our hobby that we all love to the world. So yeah, uh, on, this, uh, on this final words, um, this is the end of this uh, episode. We've been here for 45 minutes. I don't know if I'm going to edit anything. I feel like I've stumbled a little bit at the start. I hope you bet with me at the start, but I'm really glad I made this episode happen, to be honest. It's probably going to be rare that I'm going to be on my own. Um, I, it's not that I don't want to do it. It's, I, it's, I enjoy it a bit less than when I have a guest, but uh, it's been good to talk to you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope... Um, you have also videos that you have rewatched multiple times. Like Journey Video, the sky is not the limit. I've probably watched it 20 times. The same with with, uh, with Tom Smith video. And, and uh, in fact, I had to watch it last month when I was a little bit, ugh, I watched it. Uh, and Shafu, I had not watched it for a while, but I probably watched it now. This, this time is probably the fifth or sixth time, you know. So I hope you do have videos in in the fpv community that you love to go back and watch and you know and have a good relationship to those type of content um even if it's your own videos i have some of my videos that uh, i really enjoy and could have been a topic as well but i felt like it was a bit too egocentric <laughs> to be like well, you should watch three of my videos <laughs> so um Anyway, uh, thanks for listening to this episode. If you want to support the podcast, you know, I have a Patreon. Um, Patreon people um, uh, get an access to a Discord server, which, you know, I try to be active on it. It's not crazy active. It's more like trying to give community to people um, who, who wants to support the podcast. And it's really up to them if they want to chat. We're planning some catch up in real life. I hope it's going to happen one day because there's a few uh, Australian pilots on it. So if you're Australian and you want to be aware of Whenever that first meetup happens, you can join uh, Patreon and and uh, join on the Discord. If you don't want to, if you cannot be on Patreon, which I totally understand, um, you can just share the podcast with people. That really helps. You can give good rating if you like. Not just this episode, which is a bit different than the, the usual the, the the usual episode. But if you like the content in general, feel free to give it some rating on whatever app you're using. Um, and that's pretty much it, you know, uh, I hope you're looking forward to the content that's coming. So what did I say? Mental health, Zoe FPV, my on high, it's gonna be cool. I think we're going to have more guests as well, uh, that I know already, but, uh, I don't know when these will happen. So I'm not, I'm not saying it yet, but, uh, yeah, and I'm really enjoying, um, uh, the process of all of this so yeah thank you um if you still want to be part of the podcast uh, community as well like i said i have my instagram channel that you can join um and again um this is this is just this won't be overwhelming so you can join i will not like message you every every hour being like look at this look at that it's more like a little thing to have like together <laughs> so yeah Thank you for everything. I uh, I will see you, uh, I mean, see you on video if you're on YouTube or hear about you in two weeks time. And in the meantime, like uh, as usual, uh, I wish you some happy flying. All right. See you guys. Bye.